Uh, welcome to this episode, the third one from our series on Chapter 2A, which is about the basic chemistry and the chemistry of water. And on this episode, we're going to focus on the chemistry of water. All right? Now, we're very familiar with water. Uh, number one, because water is actually the most abundant compound in living things. Now, most chemical reactions within a living thing is going to occur within a solution of water. Which certainly makes sense because if it's the most abundant compound inside a living thing, then most things are going to occur with water around them. Now, what's also rather unique about water is that it expands when it freezes. And this is a quite a unique um, property of water because it's highly unusual. Most substances, when they form the solid state, actually become more dense, which means they become more packed together. But water is just the opposite. Uh, the molecules in the solid form of water, which obviously is, is ice, actually move farther away. And this gives water the ability to float when it's frozen or when it's solid, which is rather unique. And a lot of the climate on our planet is determined by this fact, because since ice floats, it has the ability to melt. And that way our ponds or lakes, um, some of our oceans, uh, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't un they wouldn't unthaw at all during the spring or summertime. So very, very important that water expands when it, uh, when it freezes. All of the neat features of water occur because of polarity. Now polarity is a word that simply means opposite sides. Now some people think that it means cold, like polar bear, but that, no, it just means opposite sides. I mean, we have a North Pole, we have a South Pole, on our planet. So it just means opposite sides, like on a battery. All right. Now this is happens because there's unequal sharing of electrons within the molecule. Uh, and water does this a lot. Now remember a molecule is any compound that's held together by covalent bonds. Just remember you want to share your electrons with that cute girl in your chemistry class named Molly Kuehl. Okay. Now if you look at your chemical formula of water, you have two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. And this one oxygen atom is rather unique because it hogs the electrons. These electrons are not held together or not shared equally. Oxygen is a much bigger atom compared to hydrogen. And just like you would see in like a preschool or kindergarten, the biggest, strongest, meanest kid sometimes will take all the toys. So in the case of water, oxygen is the mean bully who's gonna hog all the electrons, all right? now. What this will cause to happen is the oxygen in the molecule is partially negative and the hydrogen is actually partially positive. All right, so look down here in this graphic. All right, as you can see here, here are the two valence electrons that are being shared between the hydrogen and the oxygen atom. Now you would think that these electrons would be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth equally. But what they do is they actually spend more and more and more and more and more of their time around oxygen and then every once in a while just zip over there, they spin, 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 and zip over here, and then spin, spin, spin. So at any given second, these electrons are probably hanging around the oxygen, which means this oxygen is going to have a partial negative. Now this symbol here is a lowercase delta from the Greek alphabet, and it kind of looks like a teardrop. So if you just draw all that, that just means partial negative. And down here, we're partial positive. So we're not completely negative because these electrons will move back over here to the hydrogen occasionally. All right? And this was not pos uh, totally positive for the same reason. Okay? Now, actually, this drawing here is a little, little off. Okay? So let's get rid of this. You see these pair of electrons? That leads to a partial negative over here. And then you see these pair of electrons? And that leads to a partial negative over here. So there's actually four poles. It's completely balanced. You have two negatives and then you have two positives. Very, very unique for water. Now, all of the special properties of water are related to its polarity. What is a hydrogen bond? Once again, this is another feature that's related to the polarity. And this is the partial positive and the partial negative being attracted to each other. And remember, because water had two negatives and it had two positives, so it can form four hydrogen bonds at once. And three dots or three dashes are typically used to, to draw a hydrogen bond. 
All right, so as you see right here, there's one, two, three dots. So this is a hydrogen bond. And what you got here, there's the partial negative from the oxygen, and there's the partial positive from the hydrogen. And you can see these, these guys are attracted, kind of think of like a weak magnet, kind of like a magnet that you put on a fridge. It, it's strong enough to hold the magnet on the fridge, but you can pull it apart pretty easy. All right, so pretty important. As you can see here, one, two, three, four, because you got two positives on one ion, on one water molecule, and you have two negatives. All right, another factor or another unique thing about water that comes from polarity is cohesion. All right, so let me tell you what this word means. The word hesion simply means to stick, like adhesive tape, and then co, that means the same. So when it comes to cohesion, you have something that's sticking to something just like it. So you're sticking to the same. And so when we have cohesion, we have water molecules sticking or being attracted to other water molecules. And these are formed through hydrogen bonds. All right, so you see the sim symbol here? This is the symbol for the hydrogen ion. Hydrogen is way too many letters to write, so I simply just use this symbol because I'm just lazy. Remember, laziness is the foundation of, e of efficiency. Okay? Uh, one of the best examples that you'll see in nature of cohesion is called surface tension. And we see surface tension when we see these water striders on a pond, maybe your pool, uh, in a lake, etc. This guy is actually walking on a thin surface of or a film of water molecules. Okay, and here's how it happens in the case of this water strider. Okay, all these water molecules, and every one of these blue dots represents a water molecule. Every one of these water molecules are attracted to the water molecules around them. And so think of this water molecule pulling on all of its neighbors, and, and they're getting closer because of those hydrogen bonds. Okay? Well, these guys here on the surface, there's no water molecules up here. So it can't be pulled away. So it can only be pulled sideways, and more importantly, downwards. So these water molecules right here are going to pack really tight together. And that's going to form a very thin film of tightly packed molecules on the surface of this water. And that's what this insect is standing on. In fact, you can see it's actually putting a dent in this film. All right. So another thing you want to know about, you know, you know we just had summer. When you do a belly smacker, it hurts because you're hitting this surface tension really, really hard. All right. Now, raindrops have a spherical shape, and that spherical shape, you know, spherical means round like a ball, is caused by surface tension. So you look down here in this picture, these water molecules here are being attracted to all their buddies, but the ones on the surface are being attracted sideways, but more importantly, pulled inward, and that's what gives it that nice ball shape on a water molecule. All right, another example of the power of polarity is adhesion. Now, once again, the word hesion means to stick, but the ad means something different. So in this case, the water molecules are sticking to something different than them, all right? So to other substances, all right? The nature that's real important is capillary action. Capillary action is the movement of water up very thin tubes. And the thinner the tube, the water can move up. And what happens is the water is attracted to the sides of the tube. So right in here, see how this water is being pulled up? But you have surface tension down here when the water is being attracted to each other. And so this is being pulled up because the water is being attracted to the sides of the tube. That'll do it for this episode. Um, for this series on Chapter 2A, we only have two more episodes left, so we're getting near the end. So until next time, we'll see you later.